you're watching Meet the Candidates on Brockton Community Access. I'm Mark Lindy. I'm the general manager here at Brockton Community Access. And today we are bringing you a candidate for counselor at large, Adius Pierre. Adius, welcome to BCA. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, thank you so much, Mark, for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's a long campaign. It's close to the end. Election day is around the corner. Um, first of all, I'm going to give you a chance to introduce yourself to the voters on TV. I know you've done it in uh, NAACP uh, short format. Then there was a debate for Councilor at Large, and now we have a whole half an hour. So talk to the voters directly. Forget about me for a minute, and then I'll come back and ask you some questions. All right. Hello, Brockton. My name is Adi Pierre, candidate for City Council at Large. I have been living in Brockton for the past 25 years. I'm a father. I'm a husband, I'm a hardworking man. I have a law enforcement background. I work with various organizations, and the one that I put my energy to it the most is youth against drugs. I believe as parents, we have to be proactive, non-reactive. As of right now, I'm working for Plymouth County Sheriff Department. I enjoy my job, and I enjoy it as well taking kids from the community, bring them to Plymouth, have young inmates do presentation for them so they can stay away from trouble. I work with HCP Haitian Community Partners. I'm a co-founder. I work as a VP with South Shore Haitian United for Progress. I advocate for lots of people in the community. I'm in Brockton, I'm not going anywhere. I see people come and leave. Me, I said, I'm staying here because I believe I have what it takes to make Brockton better. So it's a pleasure to be here tonight to talk to you about the oncoming election on Tuesday, November 5th. So based on my conversation with uh, Mark, and I'm sure at the end of the show, you will give me a vote. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. <coughs> so. Your law enforcement background leads you to one of the most important things that people need to think about and be concerned with is public safety, okay? Um, Brockton has a very fine police department of men and women. Um, it's been diversified recently in the last couple of years uh, under the administration of Mayor Carpenter and prior to that. Um, when you're out talking to the voters, you're knocking on doors and talking to people, are you hearing people have concerns about public safety and their safety? Oh, yeah, because uh, <clears throat> every people, most likely I talk to, they said, what you're going to be doing to make Brockton safe? Because if Brockton is not safe enough, nobody will come to Brockton to invest. We're talking about business. Mm -hmm. They're very concerned. And one of the safety, uh, concerns, again, about safety is the homelessness that we have in Brockton. That created also another public safety issue because <clears throat> less unfortunate people out there, the brothers and sisters, when they're out on the street, they do everything. When I say everything, everything. That's a, that also represents a danger for the society. We need to address, address this issue and to solve it very quickly. All there was, Brockton will never be safe. And one thing that we need to make Brockton safer is community policing. Right. You just say that with the help of the late mayor, Bill Carpenter, Brockton police is diversified a little bit. Yes, but we can do more. What I'm saying by is, uh, we can do more because I, we need more minorities. More people who speak different languages, bilingual. It's very easy when you interact with someone who speaks your mom language. Like right, right. me, I'm Haitian, I speak Creole and French. If I have a problem, a, a, a Haitian police officer come to my house, it will be much easier for me to well, express my feelings. Back in the day, my dad mm -hmm. taught Spanish for yeah. police officers when he ran the law enforcement mm -hmm. program at Stonehill because he was born in Havana. A lot of people don't know that. But 
if you think about it, people will feel more comfortable talking yes. to you in that mm -hmm. language. Um, when you talk about homelessness, I heard someone say it wasn't a candidate, it was a citizen. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between homelessness and lawlessness, because there's lawlessness that's going on with some of the people that are homeless. Mm -hmm. We're right here in the heart of downtown Brockton. Yes. The shelter is diagonally across the street from us, the park across the street, a lot of issues over there. You brought up drugs before, and youth, okay? There's a <laughs> lot of drugs with the homeless population and with people in general, and thank goodness for the fire department mm -hmm. and the parking authority who clean up all the EMC, needles e that EMC, are out there and yeah. emergency management, mm -hmm, Brewster mm -hmm. Ambulance and mm -hmm. everything like that. So I guess what you're telling me is you would put your law enforcement background to good use as a city council. That is correct. Let me tell you, you don't know how many times I call uh, 911 or the fire department or the police and then they call EMT to come to pick up syringe yeah. Right in the street. Right. Uh, and what, when I make those calls, I stay there to make sure they come to pick them up. What about my children? What about your grandchildren? Your children, you, you are watching me right now. It's not safe for them. So we can solve that issue. Because that's create also a public safety. That's why I'm saying that the best way to do it, less fortunate brothers and sisters out there, some of them are veterans, they fought for this great country. I believe we can do better to treat them better. Some of them mark daily treatment. Absolutely, all sorts of different issues. And so Mainspring House, Father Bell's, has been located in the downtown area. Hmm. They're trying to yeah. redevelop the downtown area economically and yeah. revitalize it. And there's a lot of construction going on yes. there. It's probably never going to completely come to fruition unless we deal with that. So let me ask you a question. It's sure, come up at the debates. Yes. If you had an opportunity to relocate Mainspring Father Bills, where would it go? Well, we have so many empty abandoned warehouse in Brockton. That not in, not, that's not in, inside our downtown Brockton. We can turn them to some beautiful center. I'm not going to say shelter. I'm center, center yes. for okay. them. They will get the treatment they deserve. Uh, some of them will get some job training. Because once you're clean, you can do anything. Right. So now they, don't, they need the help. So we move them there, turn those warehouse to a center. They uh, have a place for them to, uh, to sleep as well. And we move them from downtown Brockton. Sometimes when I talk to people, I say, I I'm coming from Brockton. Hmm, Brockton, hmm. Uh, Main, uh, the first thing is Main Street and Warren Ave. Right. That's all they could reference. But I'm proud to say I'm a broken because I know I can make a difference. Mm -hmm. I think we have to remove them there. We cannot keep it there. Warren Ave, yeah. Vincente's, did a major investment mm -hmm. by building their store there. The health center is right next door, but we all know that that intersection on Warren Ave mm -hmm. and Pleasant Street yeah, isn't Pleasant a good Street. intersection, yeah. or even right here where our building is. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, you do have to have services for people during the day because right now, you sleep, you have dinner, you sleep there at night, you have breakfast and you're back out on the street. Not good. No good. You know, and, and no job training and no mental health counseling. Mm. And I'm with you, no veteran should ever be exactly. homeless. Exactly. Okay? No yeah. one should be. Not Everybody's sure. a couple of paychecks yes. away yeah. if you yeah. really think about it. Yeah. So when you were talking about the kids and bringing them to the Plymouth County House of Correction to see mm -hmm. this is not what you want, okay? but they have to have a good education. Brockton has had a wonderful education system. I went through it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure your oh, yes, kids have yes, gone yes, through yes. it. Mm -hmm. um, and recently it came out that there's a, a, you know, a deficit that <laughs> were, the, the, you know, different people are talking about whether it was known or not known, but the fact of the matter is, come January, there, there has to be some mathematical so, solutions. Yeah. So um, the city council's job when it comes to education, in my opinion, so people can correct me if I'm wrong, but I sat on a school committee, but not the Brockton School Committee of Southeastern. Mm -hmm. We always did things very, yeah, yeah. very efficiently yeah. with money. Brockton does too, but people aren't gonna move here, people aren't gonna come here or stay here if it's not safe, which mm -hmm. we just talked about, yeah. and if there isn't a good education. We know there is a good education, but we know it's been under assault with the charter school, mm -hmm. with 
the way funding, education funding formula is so out of date. It's a 1993 formula. So what do you think about this issue? The, the council, the school department comes to the council, the mayor prepares the budget, the mayor is the chair of the school committee, and you guys can only cut. cut. You can't, we, we can you add. can't add. We you can't can make add, changes. Yeah. So what's your thought on education and how important it is and maybe about this current dilemma? Yeah, that's Education is a, one of my top priority beside public safety. Brockton High is one of the best high school in the country, not in, not in the state, in the country. So that means we have a good system here. I believe what we need to do, we need to be more, more proactive because it was very, it was a shock for me when I read that it, uh, in the enterprise that we showed like $6 million. If we don't come up with that money, the kids are going to have to work to go to school. Who proposed the budget for the school committee? Where is the money? That's those questions I'm, I'm asking. I'm not asking you those questions, but I'm asking my, myself those questions. Right. Why they wait at the last minute to say, oh, you know what, if we don't come with that money? Why, where is that shortage come from? We have to ask all those questions, and we need, we need to get answers. Well, when I watched the budget hearings <laughs> and the school committee meetings yeah. about the time that the budget was going through in June, Mm -hmm. I believe the superintendent at the time, Kathleen Smith, yes. brought this up as an issue. I, I don't know what was done to address the issue and how the budget was balanced because, unfor un, you know, unfortunately, what? the mayor who did the, the school department does the budget. Mm -hmm. They submit it to the mm -hmm. mayor. The mayor submitted to the, submits uh, it to, to the, the council, council, yeah, and then it's all discussed and addressed. So, I'm not sure what got lost in the translation. I would have to sit down and look at the books myself. That, okay, that's what I'm saying, Mark. I don't want to be a devil advocate, right? But somebody has, needs to give us some answers because if the budget was voted, I believe it's a 400, uh, 450 million dollars, right? Something like that. Something yeah. like that. So that means. The money was there. If the issue was uh, 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 did raise when the uh, mayor was there, how come the city councilor just go ahead and approve it with that issue? So we need to find those answers to know how the budget was voted. So the council is the legislative body. Yes. They get to deal with ordinances and legislation, but their ma major responsibility is to over oversee the budget. Yes. And you know, so it, Where the money, it, it's going to be, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think the question's going to get answered yeah. before Election Day because it's next week. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And it, it's, it's right now, you know, Halloween and, uh, you know, the election is next Tuesday. But what, did I, what I, uh, I, I want to see happen to come with some sort of solution for the kids to go to school on the bus. Right. And after this is and the, after yeah. January. After, after the school yeah, vacation. Yeah. They, they so. need to find a way to find that money to do because if it was there. So I don't want to blame nobody for that. But I'm sure that's why we have a school committee. Right. Somebody needs to answer some questions. How important is it, in your opinion, for all the different government officials to work together? The school committee, mm -hmm. the city council, the mayor, the legislative delegation. Are you somebody that can bring people together and get everyone yes, to work together? Yes, man. That's what makes a government uh, uh, strong. We work together. It's not about what me. It's not about what you. It's about what the city of Brockton. At the end of the day, we all are working for Brockton. Mm -hmm. So there is no uh, hiding uh, thing. You know, everything should be public, and ev everybody should have a voice about it, because it's not, it's, not, it's not personal to me, it's not personal for you. So I believe education is a big thing for Brockton, and we need to act quickly mm -hmm. to I, overcome this situation and to put the kids back on the bus to go to school. I remember one year when there was a real funding crisis, okay? A lot of teachers Even get more than that, mm -hmm. teachers get, yeah, okay, they, there was a meeting that was brought together, it was the mayor, mm -hmm. all the city councilors, all the school committee members, the legislative delegation. I was invited because I was on the Southeastern School Committee and some money goes to, you know, mm -hmm. there's 63% of the kids from Brockton that go to Southeastern. So we were all sitting in the meeting room over in the War Memorial. It was like every government official that was elected. It no. was a very effective meeting. 
everybody put their brains together and you know talked about the funding and talked about how it could be a solution. Do you think there's enough public involvement in government? Do you think enough members of the community out there, people you're talking to when yeah. you're knocking on those doors, do, do, they, do they feel they're represented? Do they feel more could be done? And do you think you could help them? They feel like more need to be done. They, f don't, f they, don't, they don't really see the transparency in the government. That's one issue, you know? And me, I can work with anybody. Mark, you can have a strong mayor. If you have a dysfunctional city council, they're not working together with the mayor, nothing will be done. So I believe if it's not about my interest, your interest, it's about the interest of the city of Brockton, we need to work together. That's the reason why you get elected. You get paid by the, uh, by the taxpayer. Right. So they deserve better. And I believe I'm one of the people who can make it happen. You know what? Because it's not about me, it's about Brockton. So Councilor Sullivan a few years back, yeah. who's now running for mayor, set up these series of meetings with the different officials around, they're still doing it, count the four councilors at large mm -hmm. that represent the citizens citywide, a meeting every quarter to get people involved and get people to talk about the issues. Is that something you would favor? Is that something you would want to do? The ward councilors hold their ward meetings. The city councilor at large represents the, the whole, whole city. city yeah. Would you yeah, hold I, some I, meetings? Oh yes, definitely. I, I, I'm, I'm in favor of that if, he, if the mayor brings it to me. Uh, if I get if I get elected by you, the voters, I would be very happy to work with the mayor because that's that's our job. We're not enemies. We all, we're going to be working for the city of Brockton. One thing, every time I knock at the door, I, I don't want to forget that piece. Mark, let's go back a little bit about education. Yeah. We need to hold the state accountable for the money that belongs to us. We are qualified under Chapter 70 mm -hmm. to get the money as a non-wealthy city. Correct. That's why you have the delegation of, uh, in Brockton. We have Michel Dubois, Jay Cassidy, uh, Claire Conan, and... Senator Brady. Senator Brady. Right. All of them, they live in Brockton, right? Right. Well, so, Claire does, Claire, Claire she does represents Brockton. She represents Brockton. Represent Brockton. Yes, and she did live in yeah, Brockton. Yeah, yeah, in the past, yeah. We need to work with them mm -hmm. to say the state, give us the money. We are not Wesley. Right. We, we have worked on non wealthy city. So that's why we keep on uh, going crisis after crisis every time. Mike, one thing I don't like, Mike, for the teachers, every June, they got a pink slip. They're not sure if they're going back to teach in September. I believe this is the only year. Yes, in recent memory. In recent yes. memory yeah. that they don't get a pink slip. Guess what happened? They don't get a pink slip. The kids get the pink slip, they're in jeopardy, yeah. not to have a boss. Something is wrong. We need to, well, we need I, to, we need to solve that issue. I'm confident that they're going to solve that yes, issue. Yes, yes. Okay, because, I mean, it's a big issue. It, yeah. it, we don't always know whether everything that's reported mm -hmm. is always true. Yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, calmer minds have to prevail. Yes. It's right around election time, probably the worst time it could possibly be. Yeah. But uh, it, it, it leads to a lot of questions. So would you use our TV station to get the word out if you got elected to be a city councilor at large? That's would you do your own show? Well, I, I can't wait. Okay. Because I want to be trust, uh, transparent to my people. Because and we I, have some that have. Exactly. But let me tell you, I love that idea. I always say to people, don't, not only, you're not going to only vote, uh, vote for me and just don't question me. You need to know what's going on. I, I call it uh, 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 town meetings. Right. Let's have some town meetings. Let's talk to the voters. If, if, I, if I'm working on a project, the project uh, uh, didn't go through, they need to know about it. Right. I cannot just work all by myself because two years from now, I'm going to come back to them to ask them, to ask them for the vote. But if they don't know what's going on, why are they going to vote for me? Let's talk about that <laughs> two years you're yes. talking about. Yeah. Right now, it's a two-year term. Yes. The mayor's a two-year term. Yes. Do you think that's enough? Do you think it should be different? You know, if you go watch the debate, yeah. I was the one who brought it in. Okay. What, what, that, that question. The last debate. Yeah, the last okay. debate. Okay. 
they say, you know, do you think uh, uh, we should get more money, something like, or, or uh, we should as a full time, full time because we, we don't do enough? I say, yes, not only that, but we need more terms. Because, like, two years after one, one year, like three months, you only out of the campaign again right. without accomplishing anything. So I think the two years, uh, two years is not is not enough. And if uh, if I get elected, I think that's one thing I will look at to see if I can work with my colleagues to write an ordinance to see if we can go for f four years. I think four years is reasonable. So a lot of towns yes. have a three-year term. Three years, yeah. Okay, now mm -hmm. cities mm -hmm. don't necessarily have the same form of yes. government, mm -hmm. but all the boards and commissions in Brockton are a three-year term. The three years, so six, years to me, six years. To me, mm -hmm. the compromise is two isn't enough, mm -hmm. four might be too, too much enough. for some people, so three might be a good <laughs> amount because you have that middle year in between that you're not running for re-election. Mm -hmm. I had a four-year term when I was on the Southeastern mm -hmm. School Committee, and that was refreshing because I wasn't always thinking every two years, okay? Um, there, you know, a, a U.S. Senator has a six-year term. Yes. The President of the United States has a four-year four term, yeah, and yeah. he can only serve he, so two, two, term. two terms, eight mm -hmm. years. Yes. What about term limits? What about, uh, uh, what do you think about something like that? Huh, term limits, that's a good one. I think, uh, I think four, four terms should be enough. So. Yeah, because four terms, let me, let, me, let me tell you why. Let's say, you know, give me three-year terms, Two years, because if I get elected right now, most likely I will take like five to six months to, to learn. Right. It's a training. I'm going to be on training. You know, there are five, six months you know, to try to get uh, used to the job. And three months after that, I'm out there campaign again. Yeah. I don't have, I don't accomplish anything. So I think three, uh, three year term is, is uh, I mean, make a lot of sense for me and I will vote for it. And not only, that I will vote to see if we can go full time because city council job is a part time job. You have to work full time. You don't have enough time to do anything too. Okay, so on that question, yes. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. That's but okay. Let me ask the question. Yes. How would you fund that? Because right now the part time city councilors yeah. get fifteen thousand yes. dollars a year. Mm -hmm. If they were full time, yes. Uh, probably not going to be 30. It's yeah. going to be more than that. In mm -hmm. Boston, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a lot of money. They have staffs. Yes. They have offices. How would you pay for that? Let's bring business to Boston. More business we get, the more tax revenue that we have. The company are there. The entrepreneur, uh, 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 entrepreneurs are, uh, are ready to come to Boston. Let's give them a tax break, tax relief, to attract them to come to Boston. I believe in 2006, Seven, North Carolina has faced the same situation. You know what they do? They offer tax break to big company to come to, uh, to, uh, to the, uh, to the uh, city to work, to invest, and to hire pre, uh, residents of North Carolina. We can do it here too. Let's make sure Brockton is safe. Let's attract more business to Brockton. Now, as a home owner, you know, the tax is very, very, very high. But the, high. but the but tax we, rate for the businesses is higher. Yeah, I understand. But we don't have enough business in Brooklyn. Let's give them a tax break okay. for it for a limit, not for all for ever. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, you. no, it's, for, it's been discussed it's, in yes, the last three months I will, about yeah. mm -hmm. twenty-year tax mm -hmm. increment financing, mm -hmm. or ten-year, or five-year. Would you, you sound like you would favor a shorter a amount? Short, of time. A shorter amount of time to make sure people stay in business. Because let's see, we have a small business in Brooklyn. Small business is the backbone of Brockton, but they cannot stay, they cannot stay open. They, they open after two or three months, they, sh they, they close the door because they cannot survive. We need to work with these people as well Okay, I th to, for I, them to, to stay in business. I'm not sure of the time queue that I have. Yeah. I, think it's, I think it's five. Yeah. Okay, so I don't want to yes. go too long. I yes. want to make sure I give you a little time at the end for a closing statement. Yes. First of all, let people know how they can get in touch with you yeah. and talk to you um, and help you out with the campaign. Yes, tell me the phone number and all that. Yes, worked on. I would like to ask you for your vote on Tuesday, November 5th. A vote for me is a vote for public safety, education, and business. Like I said from the beginning, I have been living in Worked on for the past 25 years. 
I see myself as a Boktonian. Bokton is my home. And now I, I want to make sure home is safe. I want to make sure home is a place that welcomes everybody. That's why I'm on the ballot. I will always work with you, with you and for you. It's not about me, it's not about your children and your grandkids. Let's do it together, we can make a difference. I don't want to be among of people who are complaining about the problem the city is facing. Instead, I want to be part of the solution. I believe I have the skills and the experience required to do so. I'm humbly asking you for your vote on November 5th. I'm number eight on the ballot, and I believe we can work together to make Brockton better. If you like my platform, vote for me. You can go on my website, electadispierre.com, electadispierre.com, A-D-I-U-S-P-I-E-R-R-E. I'm sure if you drive on the city, you, you, uh, you see my sign. But you know, go to my website, see what I stand for. And I'm kindly, again, asking you for your vote. Remember, your vote is a power. You can hire me as your servant. You can fire me if I don't deliver what I promise. But I believe, by the grace of God, we can make a difference. Thank you very much. See you at the poll on November 5th. And before we go, I think I got a three-minute cue. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have a slogan on your sign, the change we need, the voice we deserve. Briefly, about 30 seconds, talk about change. change. Why change? Change. Uh, uh, I believe as a diverse city, we, are, we all need to be at the table. doesn't matter where you're from. You need to be at the table. That's the change that I need. The voice we deserve, I want to be, and I am a voice for the voiceless people out there. I would advocate for you. We all cannot go to the city hall, but you can send me as a servant to work on your behalf because I will always be a voice for you. Good answer. Adios, thank you very much. I, I know you've been dedicated to the city. We'll see you on election night. We'll see you out at the polls, and uh, maybe we'll see you in the city council. Definitely. Okay. Uh, I'm going on the city council because you're going to send me. If you want to talk to me directly, my direct line is 774-263-1100. 774-263-1100. Let's do it, Burton. Together, we can. Thanks, Adios. Thank you. You're watching uh, Meet the Candidates. Our, our guest was Adios Pierre, can candidate for counselor at large. But make sure you take advantage of the rights you have and the responsibility you have as a citizen. Tuesday, November 5th, don't disappoint us, Brockton. Blow it out of the water. Go out and vote. Make your voice be heard because my slogan is if you don't vote, don't complain. So thank you for watching and look for us on election night with coverage. Have a good night. Good night.